Matthew Perry didn't have an easy time when it came to love. Let's take a look at his dating history. After having his first drink at age 14, Matthew Perry's lifelong relationship with alcohol had just begun when the teenager's early sexual experimentation led him to conclude he was impotent, not realizing it was all the drinking that made him unable to perform. It wasn't until he was 18 and began dating Trisha Fisher, half-sister of Jolie and Carrie Fisher, that he made the connection. As he wrote in his 2022 memoir, Friends, Lovers, and the Big Terrible Thing, he initially told Fisher he was planning to remain a virgin until his wedding night, a cover for his presumed impotence. I can't have sex with you. Perry recalled, My firmness, at least in my conviction to wait, lasted two months. Fisher got him alone one night and took things to the next level. Perry confessed his secret with her, but she was undeterred, promising him that everything would work just fine. She was right, Perry wrote, sure enough, sheer glory for two whole minutes. He joked that he paid her back by, quote, sleeping with almost every woman in Southern California. They broke up, but reconnected and resumed their romance several years later while Perry was starring on Friends. But their second stab at love ended much like the first. Perry explained, she didn't abandon me, but old fears crept up, and I ended the relationship. In his memoir, Perry also wrote about dating Gabrielle Allen, a writer and producer whose credits include Scrubs and Veep. Perry was 21 at the time, which would place their romance around 1990. It was during his time with Allen, whom he called Gabby, that he realized how problematic his drinking had become, sharing that, "...love of alcohol had indeed become the helmsman of my life, but I don't think I realized just how much it controlled me." Perry and Allen were at her home, and he was hankering for a drink, badly. As Perry remembered, Gabby didn't have any alcohol at home, which is, of course, totally fine, but for me at the age of 21, all of a sudden this creeping feeling came over me for the first time. I felt my blood on fire for more to drink." In 1990, Matthew Perry landed a role in the short-lived sitcom Sydney, in which he played the brother of star Valerie Bertinelli's private investigator character. Perry was head over heels for his co-star, but she was married to make a rock star Eddie Van Halen. I would kind of distance the first day, and she just she just said, you know, where are we going to lunch? And I went, oh, okay. Perry was nevertheless smitten and fantasized that she'd leave the guitarist for him. Then, one night, he was hanging out at the Van Halens when Eddie over-imbibed to the point that he passed out. Perry wrote, If you think I didn't actually have a chance in hell, you'd be wrong, dear reader. Valerie and I had a long, elaborate makeout session. I told her I had thought about doing that for a long time, and she had said it right back to me. As excited as he was that night, Perry was equally crushed when he saw her the next day, and she didn't acknowledge what happened. Among the many revelations in Matthew Perry's memoir was his brief fling with Gwyneth Paltrow in the summer of 1994. He was on the cusp of stardom, awaiting the debut of Friends that fall when he met Paltrow in Williamstown, Massachusetts, where she was acting in a play and he was visiting family. Perry explained, At some big party, we slipped off into a broom cupboard and made out. We were both still unknown enough that it didn't make it to the tabloids. This was the last summer of my life when I could make out at a party with a beautiful young woman called Gwyneth, and no one, save Gwyneth and I, cared." After Perry's passing, Paltrow took to Instagram to share a sweet tribute to the late actor, referencing their brief romance, writing, "...he was so funny and so sweet and so much fun to be with. We drove out to swim in creeks, had beers in the local college bar, kissed in a field of long grass. It was a magical summer." In 1995, Matthew Perry had a high-profile romance with Julia Roberts after she guest-starred on Friends. Perry actually orchestrated the guest spot. When he asked her to do it, Roberts told him she would if he wrote her a paper on quantum physics. Perry did, and faxed it over the very next day. It's, it's a little bit like coming into a 90-day movie shoot on day 88, you know? I mean, these people all know each other, they all know their characters. Staff writer Alexa Young remembered the two flirting on set, saying, she was giving him these questionnaires, like, why should I go out with you? And everyone in the writer's room helped him explain to her why. She's an amazing person. She's everything every guy thinks she is, basically. <laughs> but the romance didn't last long. Perry confessed to being insecure about their relationship, writing, Instead of facing the inevitable agony of losing her, I broke up with the beautiful and brilliant Julia Roberts. I can't begin to describe the look of confusion on her face. Perry actually lived Chandler Bing's dream by dating actor and 90s star Yasmeen Bleeth, best known for playing Caroline Holden on Baywatch. Friends superfans may remember Chandler's devotion. That's Yasmeen Bleeth. She's a completely different kind of chick. I love you both. 
but in very different ways. Perry got close to another of his co-stars when he began dating Nev Campbell while they made the 1999 movie Three to Tango. But this one didn't last either. They called it quits before the movie ever even hit theaters. This fairly brief romance apparently lasted from February 1999 to June 1999. While neither actually commented on their relationship or breakup publicly, it appears this one probably ended amicably. However, despite the fizzled romance, the pair seemed happy to pose together on the red carpet at the big premiere. Jamie Tarsus, who died in 2021 at age 56, was a powerhouse TV executive who helped develop such hits as Frasier and, of course, Friends. In his memoir, Perry described Tarsus as his sort of girlfriend, recounting how he fell ill and immediately called Tarsus, writing, Jamie was an angel from God. She drove straight over to my house, poured me into a car, and drove me to the nearest hospital. Perry was ultimately diagnosed with pancreatitis, brought about by alcohol abuse. The health scare spurred him to get sober, which meant the end of the relationship. A regretful Perry explained, I need time to process being sober. In order to adequately pay sweet Jamie back for two years of giving up huge portions of her own very busy and important life by basically being my nurse, I ended our relationship. After breaking up with Tarsus, Perry met several different women with whom he felt he could settle down and raise a family, including Natasha Wagner, daughter of actors Robert Wagner and Natalie Wood. Perry recalled, Natasha had it all. She was perfect. But I wasn't looking for perfect. I was looking for more. They dated briefly, then went their separate ways. But years later, when Wagner called to tell him her daughter had been born, Perry had a heartbreaking epiphany. As he recalled, She could have had that child with me, I said to no one, as I sobbed like a newborn myself. From 2002 to 2003, Perry dated Maeve Quinlan, best known for playing Megan Conley on the soap opera The Bold and the Beautiful for more than a decade. In typical, low-key Perry style, the couple didn't gush about their relationship, but they looked happy when they were spotted out together. It's not clear why they called it quits, although they appeared to be on good terms when they were photographed together sometime later at a Beverly Hills charity auction. In 2003, Matthew Perry was linked to actor Heather Graham. According to Glamour, the drugstore cowboy actor and Seventeen Again star supposedly only dated briefly back in the day at the height of Friends' popularity, but it seems like the two may have been friends before things ever turned romantic. Not much is known about their time together, but things seem to end amicably as they continue to be photographed together at events. They look like very friendly exes. Moving on to one of Perry's most serious romances, and one of the few he actually spoke about publicly, Perry was involved with British fashion student Rachel Dunn when Friends came to an end. The two dated for two years, from 2003 to 2005, during which time they were snapped on various red carpets. Though Perry previously kept his private life just that, he spoke openly about his romance with Dunn on at least one occasion, and even revealed that they were considering starting a family. In an interview with the Evening Standard, a love-struck Perry said, With Rachel in my life, I know that I can be very committed and not some selfish guy who just wants to hang out with friends. I want to spend time with my girlfriend and explore what it means to have a much closer relationship than I previously had time for. But it wasn't meant to be. Perry and Dunn caught it quits in June 2005, and a source told People, There was no drama involved, just a commitment by Perry to stay focused on his sobriety. Perry shared details of his one date with Cameron Diaz in his memoir. It was a setup, and the two met for the first time when she arrived for a group dinner date with mutual friends. As Perry remembered, Upon seeing me, Cameron got almost instantly stoned. It was clear that she wasn't interested in me at all. During a game of Pictionary, he cracked a joke to Diaz, and she jokingly punched him in the shoulder, only she missed and punched him in the face. There was no second date. Matthew Perry's longest romance was with actor Lizzie Kaplan. The two were together for six years between 2006 and 2012, and their split came as a surprise to fans. Kaplan is known for major roles in Mean Girls, True Blood, Masters of Sex, and more. How do I even begin to explain Regina George? But despite both having high-profile careers, the couple kept their relationship very private. Though they seemed happy during their time together, rumors erupted in 2013 when The Independent asked Kaplan about the relationship. Apparently, Kaplan covered her ears when Perry's name was mentioned and changed the subject. It turns out the two had secretly split more than a year earlier. As for what went wrong, the notoriously private couple aren't saying anything, but Kaplan married Tom Riley in 2017. In 2018, it seemed like Matthew Perry had finally found the one in Molly Hurwitz. 
the couple kept things under wraps for a while before going public. Hurwitz confirmed their romance on Instagram on Valentine's Day 2020, alongside a photo of them together. She posted, Second year being my Valentine, but his first as an Instagram influencer. HVD to my favorite. Three months later, it was over, at least temporarily. By November 2020, Hurwitz and Perry confirmed they were not only back together but engaged. In a statement issued to People, Perry gushed, I decided to get engaged. Luckily, I happened to be dating the greatest woman on the face of the planet. But sadly, this one didn't end well either. On June 1, 2021, Perry told People he and Hurwitz had called it quits, saying, Sometimes things just don't work out and this is one of them. I wish Molly the best. As the star of one of the biggest TV shows ever, Perry's no stranger to a gossip column. He's been unofficially linked to a number of big-name stars over the years, including Renee Zellweger. However, she shut down the speculation in 2003, telling Cosmopolitan, "'He's really nice and handsome. I'm not dating him, but that's good. Let's make my list really good.'" Gilmore Girls star Lauren Graham was another star rumored to have gotten close to Perry, but in her 2016 book, Talking As Fast As I Can, Graham explained, "'He became my longtime friend who I almost but never exactly dated.'" Perry was also rumored to have dated Piper Perabo and Kristen Davis at the same time, but this one was probably just speculation. Perry was also rumored to be linked to Jennifer Capriati and Elizabeth Hurley, but denied both to people. 